It's really fun beating people you know uh, because you can joke a little bit afterwards if they can take it. But basically, we just want to win. Doesn't matter if it's friends, enemies, foes. It doesn't. I mean, I don't care. I just want to win. Hey everybody and welcome back to the opening day of the 2014 North American LCS Spring Split. I'm David Freak Turley and alongside me is Sam Kobe Harbin Kensler and we're taking over the analy analyst desk. No, Casper's desk for the last two days. Uh, games. There we go, I can talk. Now Krepo says he just wants to win and well, he'll get, he'll get another chance at it in just a few minutes when Evil Geniuses faces off against TSM. You can't blame them. They moved a long way for this. Yeah. Uh, committed a lot to come over to North America for the North American LCS. Yeah, you don't want to pull a Quantic and come all the way across and then just not, not really pull it together. So they have a chance. <laughs> they can do well here. All right, guys. Now, we want to remind everyone at home that the North American Challenger Series is currently underway on LOLEsports.com. Click on Leagues and Tournaments at the top of the page and follow all the NA Challenger action there. Then be sure to watch the Challenger Series Saturday and Sunday immediately following the North American LCS coverage. That's the next two days, we're going to have some of that. Now, uh, let's check in uh, on what you guys have been saying on Twitter. Of course, we had asked you which team will exceed expectations in the North American LCS Spring Split and why. Now, here's what you guys had to say. At Veilstraw says, I think Curse will. Because of the versatility of Voiboy and Quas, they basically play every champ in the game. I like that people keep pointing this out because uh, more champs, the more new champs that we've seen, the mm -hmm. more success the teams have had. Yeah. So I think that is a strong thing for Curse as well. Unfortunately, Warwick's undefeated streak just died. Ugh. Benny, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> at Leo K. Lol says the team that will exceed expectations is is a uh, CLG with Hotshot GG back. They have the most potential. <laughs> Mm. I don't think anyone will argue that CLG has pretty much always had the most potential. <laughs> yeah. They've pretty much had the most potential for years and years <laughs> to come. But I, I'm excited to see Hotshot GG back in the player's seat uh, and see how he can perform because, yeah. you know, he's been playing a lot of solo queue. It's very different than right. coming back to uh, actual structured play. And he's got his own fun champion pool as well. I'm excited to see what he brings out here. Uh, next up at Pong's Turf 0 hope I got that right, uh, says EG will be the most surprising. Pobelter is a really underrated mid laner, but his mechanical skills will help bring his team to victory. I think surprising is a great word for this team, especially because they have Pobelter. You know, yeah. the wild card everybody always talks about. Will he be amazing? I know, will he die a bunch of times in a row? But <laughs> really, <laughs> the, uh, this is very subjective because, you know, it depends on where you set the bar for the team in the first place to see if they mm -hmm. exceed your expectations. That's true. Some guys came in giving them a really good chance of it. Some people said they were going to be really bad, but they already surprised by beating DTG in the promo tournament. Yeah. See where these guys go. Next up at... R93 Esports says Coast will probably shock people the most. They dominated the challenger scene and added a great analyst in Alex Penn. I'm a fan of Alex Penn, even though a lot of the, he's got a lot of haters. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a really good pickup for them. Mm -hmm. um, and he does fit really well in with that team. I think he meshes well with the actual team members. Yeah, I think so. In any way, like if you if you don't have any haters at all, you're not doing anything like <laughs> there's something you're doing wrong because you should be at least notable enough that someone hates you for a reason. You just got to get the most lovers as well. Now, at Orbit, Josh says, I think EG will exceed expectations. Another EG lover out there. I think their hunger and desire to prove people wrong will drive them through. I think they definitely have that. Um, they have amazing drive. Like we said, they moved all the way over here just to uh, you know, try and get into the NA LCS. Now that they're here, they definitely want to prove something. Yeah, I think they can do it. Now, guys, of course, well, we'll see that next game. Exactly. So you guys are going to be ready for this one. Now, as always, we appreciate the responses. Please keep sending them our way. We love hearing from you guys. Now let's turn our attention to that next game, TSM versus Evil Geniuses. These players have faced off before, but they haven't faced off as a team in a very long time. So, Kobe, with this matchup, what can we expect? I mean, the, the fans already touched on it. Pabelter. Yeah. What's he going to do? What's he going to play in the mid? He had so much success with Ziggs in the mid. Uh, I don't think that he'll be getting that one again. You know, but whatever he does end up going, it's going to be a, kind of a wild card. Kassadin, I feel like they picked it up just because it was available and everyone's mm -hmm. so accustomed to it being banned. They felt like that was just a, a pick that you need to grab if it's up. Yeah, and, and the first pick run didn't quite work for them. I mean, now they're going to face off against another really scary mid lane jungle combo. Bjergsen, odd one, mm -hmm. uh, likely to shut them down as well. they got to keep that in mind. Uh, but, of course, both teams are coming off a loss in their first games today. TSM was methodically taken down by Cloud9. They've got to find their first win, too. Yeah, and that game, like Jet said, you know, having to deal with those annoying mushrooms is, uh, is a, a bit of a trial. Kind of a... A shock here, coming back for their, their yeah. first game, having to go into a Teemo game that's it's very different than a lot of other uh, mid lane champions. So much late game objective control. It's 
just you have to buy all these upgraded Oracle lenses quickly, mm -hmm. which they did. Yeah, they rushed um, four of them. And they bought a bunch of pink wards as well, but still having to s spend so much money just to deal with that single pick, mm -hmm. very rough. Yeah, I was actually uh, talking to High off camera, like I think after our interview, and he's like, did anyone count how many mushrooms I got down? At one point I thought I had like 20, and I think he's going to go watch the VOD like afterwards in the hotel and be like, okay, there was one, two, three, four, and like just do the map and how many mushrooms he had. And that's always like a good, I, I feel like, you know, Draven's passive like tells you how much gold you uh -huh. made from it. Timo's uh, ulti tooltip should tell, me, tell you how many mushrooms are on the field at once. So we need a fan to uh, go out there, find out what max cooldown mm -hmm. and uh, the 10-minute uh, timer on those mushrooms. Yeah. What's the max number you can possibly have on the map? Yeah. And then to count them as well, the guy who did the, the <laughs> okay. ward kill counter from WE versus CLG EU at Season 2 Worlds can go count the mushrooms as well. And then we'll have a nice music video about those poor, sad, dying mushrooms. And then we'll be good to go. Have a big counter. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I, I just really love Teemo, so anything involving him, I just start gushing and talking faster. So how about if they uh, take those mushrooms and they draw out a Trinity Force on the ground? I, I would just start weeping Explode. of like happiness, and I would be able to keep casting. I would just sit here going, like, they've done it. They've just they've done everything I ever wanted to. As long as he jungles, though, he's got him. You need that the whole trifecta, and okay. then you're good to go. Just Another thing, though, that I want to bring up from just because these two teams already played, mm -hmm. um, the EG there, the Yasuo top with the Blade of the Ruin King. Did yeah. not expect that one. And if they do get him again, I don't expect uh, that to happen really ever again. Probably the Static Shiv and yeah. IE. Uh, combo would be more. Yeah, what was weird to me there is he was actually poised to do the Static Shift IE build. Um, I know Jap talked about it before uh, with High, but also um, Inox had 10% crit from his rune page. Like, he was mm -hmm. poised to do the 100% crit and then just like didn't buy crit items. So hopefully makes the adaptation. Guys, we're going to get ready for the game. Let's check out the starting lineups here. On the blue side is Team Solo mid with Dyrus in the top lane, the odd one in the jungle, the crowd cheering for their favorite team, Bjergsen in mid, Wild Turtle on AD carry, and Expecial on support. And on the red side, it is Evil Geniuses. Inox is up top. Snoop A is in the jungle. Their mid laner is that wild card, Pabelter. Mm -hmm. Then in the bottom lane, we've got Yellow Pete and Crepo. And Yellow Pete and Crepo have been together for such a long time as well. I mean, the EG lineup in general. Back with Snoopy, yeah. Back, yeah, exactly, with Snoopy as well. These guys have been playing together for such a very long time. And they've always seemed very consistent to me. Yellow Pete and Crepo seem like a very strong bottom lane there. And they've got to be one of the oldest duo lanes now that's been uninterrupted. I know we've talked about, like, Meet Your Makers have been together more uh -huh. or less for, like, a thousand days now. Gambit's gets broken because Edward left for a while. So they're, they're <laughs> starting over again. There's not a lot of bot lanes that have that kind of duration. I, I like the ones that sort of stick together like yeah, that. Yeah, they've played together for a long time. And he talked about in the video mm -hmm. the importance of knowing what your partner is going to do without having to say it even. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't have enough time uh, that vocally calling out a play is actually going to work out. These guys definitely have it. The synergy in the bottom lane is there. Seems like Crepo is the one you know, driving more of the aggressive <laughs> plays. And yeah. it's just whether they'll follow up or not. Pete might might show up in like Cogult or something. We'll see if he gets that Leona yeah. uh, for Crepo, because that would be huge for them. And yeah. a lot of their wins, he's been instrumental with those long range initiates. Yeah, and, and sort of speaking of, of initiators and sort of aggressive players as well, like special, I really gotta say, has done a good job. Of course, pulled in a new AD carry player midway through season three and seemed to be doing great. Immediately, immediately had enough synergy there that they were holding up. They even went and experimented. I know Jat talked about this, the Annie uh Shin Jao lane. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't work out as well, but I like that they tried the innovation as well. Um, I, there's just like a lot of fun things about TSM's bottom lane too. Yeah, they both do have a lot of synergy. You know, actually, on the the question of how long have uh, bottom lanes been together, like, do we count double lift and Afro move from when they first were together, nope. and then he got benched, and then and then <laughs> back on team uh, is the whole no? no? Okay, it's, it's got it's got to be contiguous. Okay, and gotta so, be contiguous. so Nintendo dude actually has like a brief respite off of the old like GGU roster. Oh, yeah, uh, he had like a week off. Starts it over again. Same way. So. I have so much respect for the guys that come back after being benched, though. Mm -hmm. Like that's a that's a huge deal to do to s keep the drive after you've already um, you know had to take a back seat and come back even stronger. Like Nintendo, it's better now really than he ever was before. Yeah, yeah and I like those players, and and it it goes to show you like. Sometimes the esports world can be very, very small. And those of you who've kind of been around the esports scene, you're going to sort of, like, you'll see the same faces once in a while. Um, and just even the players themselves, right? Like, you know, stay in good terms with Afremu. You might need another support one day. Uh, and, of course, in true CLG fashion, they convert an AD carry player to play support, just like they convert mid laners to play jungle. It's just it's the way they do things. They had to keep them in the, 
in the what Rolodex and those don't even exist anymore, <laughs> basically. But uh, yeah, they call them back up and, and you know the CLG uh, and we'll of course see them next game. They're they're back together as well. So uh, also to talk about this, Inox is a player that I actually have, have followed for a while in the mm -hmm. challenger scene. Um, I know we talked about his Yasuo. Yeah. Sketchy build. But I like him a lot as a player. Um, I know him actually as, as a huge Needly player, actually. Um, yeah. And I don't remember Champ Select from the first game. I'm kicking myself for not remembering, but he used to pull bands every single game in Challenger. He did. It's it's uh, similar to like Hotshot almost. Mm -hmm. You're know, always banning uh, Needly against Hotshot. We, we keep on alluding to the COG <laughs> games already. <laughs> that one's going to come up next, guys. Um, we're going to have to wait for that one. But this one, uh, EG versus TSM. Uh, who, do you, who are you really favoring right now? I feel like TSM is the stronger team. They mm -hmm. looked good for the most part uh, with like against Cloud9 for a good portion of the game, right? Like, I feel like Cloud9 is still that dominant team that's going to have a really good record here, and TSM held up among the best, like just counting season three until now. Like, they did a pretty good job of that game, and I still think TSM is very strong. I think Bjergsen is an amazing player as well. Oh yeah, um, Those I know solo he has, kills. Oh man. He's just that, like, he's incredibly, incredibly good. And so I, I'm looking forward to see a lot more from Bjergsen. I think the rest of the team has been kicking it up as well. Odd one improving steadily, even though he's been on that roster for so long. I think there's a lot of individual talent here. I would say arguably more talent on TSM, as well as their team synergy is just getting better and better. Interesting, the, the odd one there, you know, playing that Nunu um, last game, I'm very, very interested to see what he'll, he'll pick this game because Nunu... Mm -hmm. Not having like the the biggest impact on the lanes early game, and you know because they had Teemo, the control game also wasn't yeah. really there for him. So it seemed like it was a really good um, adaptation by Cloud9, I guess, um, to deal with that one. Yeah, I liked it a whole heck of a lot. Um, honestly, if you're talking about what the auto's going to do, I know his favorite's Elise right now. If he can get it, they'll go for it. Yeah. Uh, TSM are going to be blue side this time around, if I recall correctly. So they'll get the crack at that if it doesn't get banned out there. And that's going to get him the most comfortable. It's going to give him the best chance at pushing these lanes forward. And honestly, TSM, if, if they've retained a lot of that Reginald essence, it'll be they'll get an early lead, and then they'll just completely crush you from there and keep the aggression on. When, yeah, the Reggie, uh, Reggie as a coach. Yeah. How, do you, how would you feel if, uh, you know, maybe just like a, a regular softball team or something or just okay. like a very relaxed league? Mm -hmm. uh, if you had Reginald just as a coach in sort no. of any kind of – no? <laughs> in a relaxed yeah. league, no. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm like going for world domination, okay, okay, sure, I'll let Reggie yell at me when I do something wrong. But if I'm like, we're just going to play softball and chill out on weekends – I don't even want a coach, let alone Reginald. He seems so much more happy and just uh, relaxed as a coach, though. Like, okay. It feels like uh, a lot of that stress has been taken off his shoulders, at a, uh, not right. having to be a player right. apparently, anymore. Apparently I missed a lot of his coaching sort of <laughs> seminars then, because like, the last I'd seen of him, he was like very aggressive and alpha about uh -huh. it. And then there was like the one video that they posted like three or four months ago of him sitting behind his team telling him things they were doing. It seemed a bit more positive. He's telling guys, okay, good job. You know, you're talking more. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, I just wonder, like, how much of the game knowledge he imparts. Because Reginald was a player to me that had, like, this sixth sense on Baron. He actually sort of always knew when his team could take it and always knew when the opponents were doing it. And you, you rarely saw Baron go sour on TSM. I feel like that's, like, a skill that's hard to Man, impart through coaching. That's a unique skill, too, because we've seen so many games <laughs> determined at bad Baron calls yeah. or just split-second steals, like, even earlier today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and so the the... Individual decision making, the split second decision making. We actually saw Voiboy talk about this in our interview with him, where he said, Yeah, when it comes to late game, I'm the one who's got all the experience. I can tend to make the calls. And Reggie was a guy who was com competing back in beta. Like the original tournaments in 2009, he was shot calling for a team. So replacing that experience is always going to be a bit difficult for TSM. All right, well, we are into the game. Yeah. Let's jump in and see how TSM will fare against the EG roster. Well, so far, EG not target banning uh, Odd One out just yet, but the actual Assassin's removed away from EG. There's the Elise ban. I want to see if uh, they do similar things with the jungle picks uh, to what Cloud9 did to them. It seems like they uh -huh. had a pretty good amount of, like, emphasis on Odd One's champion pool. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, because he's, like you talked about Voiboy being around, or uh, Reggie being around for so long, Odd One's been around for mm -hmm. pretty much just as long as Reggie, almost as long. Uh, yeah. So he's played a whole bunch of junglers. And uh, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what has he actually kept his skills up with? Mm -hmm. Because you can't just have played a champion maybe a couple months ago and then whip him out in, the, in an LCS game because they're just small little uh, things that you, you have to practice and you have yeah. to have muscle memory for. Well, here we go. The Kha'Zix banned out as well. 
So we have seen a couple of jungle bands go back and forth here. It's going to be really interesting, but the Olaf is picked up here for the odd one. So that's going to be right away first pick jungle. Not a lease, but I guess his second pick here. Yeah, probably, probably a jungle. I mean, it's possible they could True. switch it up, but man, all junglers love grabbing Olaf just because, as we saw earlier today, Zuna, mm -hmm. you can, that is one of the champions from the jungle you can hard carry with. Yeah. You can just go at the other team and destroy their back line. Yeah, and it got banned out against uh, XDG as well in their very next game. Uh, I was actually taunting Nintendo in pregame chat. I was like, you better not let Zuna show you up with that Olaf. And then it gets banned, so he doesn't get the chance to. So, only good Olaf in NA right now, not in Ten Dude. So, uh, we're going to see if Oddwin can keep that mark up. But EG's turn for some picks. Inox and Snoopy to lock in. The first two here, they're looking at Vi, like that choice we've seen her be incredibly popular of late. And I think wow. that um, this TSM team like knows something from scrims or from some intel that uh, I'm not aware of, because the Hecarim ban at the end there it seems yeah. a bit random. Like We have not seen it had a big impact, and it's probably a very specific to EG ban, mm -hmm. or it could even just be a throwaway ban. I'm trying to think, because I know like uh, there's players who innovate really weird things. Top Hecarim used to be a thing. Way back in the day, uh, I, I know a, used to play it. I know a few ma uh, jungle mains that are just like, oh, I can't jungle. Well, I'm going to play top lane Hecarim. Man. Hecarim tacks all the lanes and get gigantic. And yeah, it's interesting because Vi fills some kind, sometimes a similar role if I press R to initiate a fight. But So they know something I don't, unfortunately. The picks, though, come back to TSM here. It's also interesting seeing Caitlyn back in the mix, but it's going to be Shivana and Leona picked up here. So TSM ready to go hard. All right, so they take away Krepo's Leona, plus they get that long range engage. Mm -hmm. This team, even though it's only three champions right now, is a beastly team fight, okay? Yeah. If they get any sort of speed boost on this team, it'll be ridiculously scary to fight around any sort of dragon or jungle buffs. Any kind of uh, objective that's not under a turret is gonna be really, really in favor of TSM. Just looking at that front line looks extremely scary. It definitely is. It's weird, actually. I haven't seen Sivir almost at all since the nerf, since the 3.15 mm -hmm. has been played on the tournament realms. And I'm, I'm surprised she fell off that much, you know, because she's so good with these kind of comps we're seeing right here. And you talked about speed boosts. Maybe they'll go for it. EG, though, still... She does still get a little play in, like, Korea, right? Yeah, a little bit. Like, we see her once in a while, but she's, like, more an odd pick. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we go. Last few seconds on uh, on the next ones. Pobelter does get his zigs and, and Lee Sin coming through. Now, we've seen Lee Sin support. Uh-huh. <laughs> for what it's worth, it's probably you hoping for that lane. one. I am. That's great. I, it was so fun when they did it. Yeah, and going with another melee when the other team has Leona is a is a pretty uh, interesting choice. I like that because it would sort of push Leona's itemization more towards like Dorian Shield and Face of the Mountain stuff, like more health. Yeah. Um, and away from the extra speed boost that would come from the Talisman. If it's you true. make her match your um, hand to hand fighting very early on, then you might be able to delay that extra speed boost. Interesting idea there. Leave yourself some options. And TSM going to lock in the Zed here for Bjergsen. Okay. Sivir AD carry as well. So uh, safe to say this team kind of wants to go hand. Yeah, they've got that speed boost that I was talking about after the first three picks. And they've got more here. The Zed, one of Bjergsen's signature champions. A lot of people stepped away from the Zed after the changes um, to the delay on the shadow. But he was one of the few players that kept on playing Zed in solo queue. And the confidence there is very interesting because he's going up against Pobelter Ziggs that we also mentioned. Mm -hmm. He had amazing time on, and that is a champion that will constantly shove you into your lane. Yeah. So you're gonna want to counter that with high kill potential. Yeah, and so I gotta say that, I feel like that's TSM really planning this one out. They know, you talked about it, Pabelter loves the Ziggs, plays really well on it, TSM not banning it, knowing it will get picked, and then saying, all right, Bjergsen, we trust you to play Zed into this. I gotta imagine that was the game plan here. I, I like these two setups here, because TSM, like I said, they're going with these very, very tanky divers, uh, speed boost from Sivir, gonna be able to get in there for the back line. Meanwhile, uh, the EG team, not only do they have the Ziggs for the Siege, uh, and the poke, but they also have the Caitlyn, one of the perfect AD carries for sieging up like that. So yeah. very different team compositions here, and we'll have to see which one can get the early advantage and make uh, sort of dictate the pace of the game. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fun to see the matchup and how these how these guys can outposition each other and make their teams work the way they want. Now, before we jump into the game, let's see who you guys think is going to earn the victory here. And according to lolesports.com, 74% of you. I think that TSM is going to pull out the win. Three to one odds, TSM. There's a lot of TSM fans. That's not too surprising there. Uh, I yeah. mean, they ha usually have a pretty big margin. Mm -hmm. There is good star, star power on the EG team, though. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that EG lost like a, a, a 
internet fan vote that badly, actually, because there's a lot of really good faces there. But apparently the fans here for TSM, that that was kind of like a deficio. Like, I, I, I could have followed that one up pretty easily with a deficio style. <laughs> it's a lot of pretty faces, pretty faces on that team. <laughs> All right, it is the team with Snoopy, let's be fair. <laughs> okay. I mean, let's all be real here. All right, guys, getting ourselves into the game. TSM, Evil Genius is on the screen. And in the blue trunks, it is TSM. All right, so as expected, you know, a lot of Dorans coming out, but we do see the Leona going with the, uh, um, working towards the face of the mountain upgrade, mm -hmm. um, starting off there with a little bit of extra life. That means also when you start that item, you're going to be shoving the lane because yeah. it does have the execute still for melees uh, removed for the range. But still, that means that they're going to be pushing up, trying to get that minion wave advantage so they can get the early level two. Plus, it's very hard to fight uh, duo lane if they have the advantage of the first creep wave. And I got to say, like, you look at this duo lane and you're like, oh, my God, I'm fighting against Caitlyn Thresh. I'm, I'm at, like, li literally 150 range disadvantage by being Sivir. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they re you're right. They really want to push the lane, relieve a lot of that pressure from Wild Turtle, and he's going to have a much easier time getting through the early game. Yeah, they kind of want to protect themselves with a giant minion, uh, a minion wave. Like so a shell of sorts. Yeah, exactly. So they use that Relic Shield. Uh, we'll have to see if they get to lane early. That would mean that they would probably not want to help the jungler at the first buff that they start mm -hmm. at. Uh, we'll see if they actually pull that one off or if they just go regular. But anyways, <laughs> anytime you have that Leona lane, looking for the early level two, we'll have to see if they go aggressive early. Yeah, we'll see where the lane movements end up going. Right now, Inox chilling top it is top lane Lee Sin. By the way, teleport top lane Lee Sin. We've seen Insect run that before. Uh, when that happened, he would teleport to like a, a ward in like the enemy wraith brush, and then jump a wall and kick someone into a mid lane, and Jerkson would just kill the freaking guy. It was pretty, pretty freaking sweet. So interesting. We do actually have the bottom lane for EG skipping out on helping the jungler. Snoopy starting, opting to start up in that red buff means that they are actually going to be the ones getting that minion wave advantage down bottom, and the early aggression from Leona is going to be cut down. Caitlyn does exactly the same thing. She loves to get an early minion wave going mm -hmm. uh, because she can poke you so well under the turret. And they do have the Thresh, which is sort of that soft counter to Leona engage. Krepo's very experienced on this champion. He is extremely good at getting the timing down for using those flays to interrupt her engage. Wow, and already Wild Turtle looks special. You talk about the lane matchup, but they've already, they missed the experience in the very first minion. They missed gold in the second one, so already things not looking happy. Special is going to try to turn this one back around. So, duo lane, early lead for EG. Turtle Link Special going to have to try to make up some lost ground as time goes on, but at least they'll have that in the team fights when their ultis come up. So, they're going to. Now, the only question is how well can they see us under tower, and how much harass can Yellow Pete get off? Because you already mentioned the low range of Sivir. Wow, the engage early. Wow, a lot of Not even level two. Back out to a special though. 300 health. I don't think he would have done that one again if he had the choice to redo it. No level two there. It means there's no stun follow up. And he really just has to run away as soon as he Zenith blades in. Yeah, the one advantage he had from going Relic Shield is it's cheaper than Doran's Shield. So he gets to bring some potions. But special taking a bit of pain there. These guys trying to reset the lane back now. Both these guys level two. Let's check out the other lanes there. Dyrus, the early push into Inox. You can see, actually, Lee Sin not liking that one so much. Yeah, um, Shivana. That's why they're the sort of trinity that people are talking about in the top lane are the Shivana, Mundo, uh, and Renekton, because a lot of the other top laners do have a little bit of difficulty dealing with them um, in lane phase. Lee Sin is definitely one of those champions that's always been a decent pick up top. Uh, you just yeah. have to play it very well. And I'm thinking that Inex is probably going to even be like maxing his Tempest and Cripple first so that he can get extra magic damage and he'll have multiple sources to try and whittle that Shivana down. Uh oh, but Snoopy is looking Ooh. around the backside. TSM sp actually senses that one out. Odd one looks for the top lane as well. These junglers getting a bit feisty. So is Bjergsen actually. Pobo out there down low. But there's like. The almost moves are happening right here. You still got Snoopy in the enemy jungle. Oddwin doing the same. Yeah, Snoopy there just a little bit out uh, from that tri bush, and they pinged him away right immediately. Here goes Oddwin for the dive, already ghosting. Inox's shield is on cooldown. He's going to flash away, but one more attack for the Oddwin, and that's going to be first blood TSM. Four minutes, 25 into the game, and a couple of lost minion waves. Now, that's terrible news not only for Inox for going down, but it's also terrible news for Snoopy 
because a Shivana top lane is one of the few top laners that will continually be able to shove you in. Wow, Pabelter just walking up for that harass there. Shivana, she'll shove the lane in, and then she will start invading your jungle all by herself. So that means <laughs> that it's going to put pressure not only on Inox, but also on Snoopy's jungle. Uh, Snoopy, good luck. You are Vi, and I think Shivana just wants to take a bite out of you as this game moves on. But we'll watch these lanes reset, and only only Boots and a Doran's Blade picked up for Dyrus here, so not a huge stat advantage over the Doran Blade, Doran Shield of Inox. Yeah, Snoopy going for the second time's a charm here. Same gank path through the tri-bush. There is no ward. Crepo definitely telling there in the flash engage. The flash play, the uh, shield though is on here and can they get the damage onto a special. Ignite is on, that's surely to be a kill and Snoopy gets the kill credit there. Both junglers this game getting kill credits. All right, so that was two flashes though. They did use, uh, you know, Crepo's flash for the initiate because he wasn't worried about tipping off this TSM bottom lane. He, they were obviously like, oh, jungler must be here. Crepo's just running at us by himself. He knew he could get the flash flay off, so all he had to do was make it in time for Snoopy to get off the Vault Breaker. The successful gank does reward them with a kill. Ah, well played then by EG, making it a bit closer. Only a 300 gold difference. About what you'd expect when you lose a first blood like that. And they're going to go back to the base. EG picking up some new items. Looks like early Sight Stone trip, or at least you know the attempt here for Crepo, picking up that Ruby Crystal. Whereas special Tier 2 gold generation, actually, he's all in for money. Wow, the early upgrade is pretty big, and they are going to need you know, more sources of money because the CS down there for the bottom lanes is not looking very good for TSM. That's not even really due to the kill either. It wasn't mm -hmm. due to the gank. It was due to the early shove. They didn't help their jungler at the buff, built up that giant minion wave that we talked about, and they were able to keep TSM under their own turret. Speaking of under his own turret, but Belter only level 5, Bjergsen 6, and Belter really forced to be a bit more defensive here. You're seeing him hide away, try to wave clear, but very much respecting the Zed of Bjergsen. Like that to still be a top we're going to have to watch as we go into this game. I wonder if Belter goes for a fast uh, Zonia's here to survive that. Fast Zonia's is a uh, classic uh, move against Zed. You know, starting with the arm guard, so you get all of that very efficient armor and um, ability power. Mm -hmm. Wow, just... Two inches too short. And Odd One is two levels above Snoopy as well, and he's going to have Smite up in about eight seconds. Snoopy forced to leave his own jungle, and Odd One managed to give himself his own ward coverage to keep the counter jungle going. Crepo, of course, getting engaged on Bike Special. They're going for the fight there, but a level disadvantage for TSM. Not the happiest place. Crepo going to zone them the rest of the way out, and they'll be safe with the lane finally unfrozen here at this bottom lane. Man, and even with uh, you know the early upgrade there of the Relic Shield, he still hasn't been able to get very many executes off because they were shoved so early. Dyrus now in a really tight spot. He's going to pull it for the Odd One. Inox level 6, though, and going to help push this one away. Odd One 6 as well. Stoopy still only 4. Still a huge level lead for TSM. Zigzbomb comes out. Still hurts Dyrus, but he's going to be okay. But Red Buff is now controlled by EG successfully. Look look how much they had to commit, though. EG, they it cost them so much to try and defend their jungle. Because of that early kill that was up top, because of that early Shivana lead, man, they are able to jump all the way in towards the Red Buff, and a whole wave was just lost up at that top turret. And look at the minion kills starting to spread apart. Of course, you talked about that bottom lane, the great early start to Caitlyn Thresh. But mid lane, up 12 minions. Top lane, up 10 as well. Not to mention Odd One getting some extra tax money as well. And now it's just wonderful stuff for TSM with a blue buff now going to Bjergsen. Ooh, I like this call. Because of the late blue buff here for TSM, because of the start down at red, they've actually timed it with their dragon aggression. They know that they cannot fight TSM over this dragon. So the only way that they can grab it is if they time it with the blue buff because they know that the odd one and mm -hmm. Bjergsen are both going to be on the top side of the map. Very, very well played there from EG, trying to get themselves right back in this game. A really great play calling there. I got to commend them for that one. I guess that is why they call them evil geniuses because they make some smart calls here. TSM trying to recoup some losses in the bottom lane. And now one thing to point out is that the CS lead will be a bit misleading here because a lot of Xpecial's minion kills will count for both. So Wild Turtle is about 10 higher than you expect him to be, but still, as you yeah. said, great lane for each. It's still a, a big deficit there. And we'll also be trying to see if Xpecial can get his executes onto the cannon minions. Um, he'll, he'll definitely get much more gold value out of those. Uh, mm -hmm. It's either that or a melee minion if you can't wait for a cannon minion. But... Yeah. Um, We'll have to see if they can actually catch back up because it's still still hurting.
And, you know, speaking of, of sort of gold value as well, I noticed Expasha was getting plus one gold for dying minions, meaning he went deep utility mm -hmm. to get the extra money. Now, most supports I see, especially tank supports, tend to go deep defense. It's interesting to see Expasha invest so heavily in monetary gain instead of just stats. It's rare. Yeah, a little bit more late game focus. Um, and they haven't, they haven't really played super aggressive. So uh, it was, turns out, in hindsight, good, good idea there. All right, well, well played Expasha then, making the lane work for him. Snoopy looking around for a counter gank, hiding well in the Fog of War. Okay, no, no, just going for his double golems. But he is level six though, so the uh, aggression can turn on here for Snoopy. Right, so the possibility of that Vi gank is definitely there. Oh wow, uh, Bjergsen going pretty deep there in the mid too. That possibility for the assassination is something that you have to watch out for. Since Pabelter has gone Ignite, and he has not picked up that uh, barrier that a lot of Ziggs will do in a matchup like this, going up against an assassin. Mm -hmm. He has to play even more careful because Bjergsen right now, you can see, already cutting through his life bars like butter. And this is going to be a rough spot right there. Brutalizer already done all kinds of wonderful things for TSM. Only 600 gold lead, though. That uh, The Sneak Dragon hasn't, unfortunately for EG, done that much. And there here it comes is. the all-in for Belter drop. Dangerously low. That should be enough to kill him. Doesn't even need the death mark to pop. Goodbye, Poe Belter. Yeah, no barrier, not even a chance to survive that one. Uh, Poe Belter does, you know, get the jump backwards, but not enough to save his life. And a repeat dive. Here comes the odd one. Inox just going down. Goodbye. Kick doesn't do much of anything for him. Well played. Another one for TSM. And even in moving into the mid game here, the plan for TSM is pretty much keep it going just as they are doing already. Keep your solo lanes, shoving them up, and then dive with the odd one because the dragon is down, so they don't have that really uh, the objective to fight over. Uh, all they have to do is keep playing to their strengths on the map. The bottom lane is a little bit behind. Probably don't want to mess with anything there because if you get counter ganked there, then you could turn it around. But if you continually go to the lanes that are ahead already, then mm -hmm. even if Snoopy shows up, you'll have the advantage. Well, speaking of going to lanes that are ahead, though, here comes the teleport gank with Anox, a 4v2 bottom lane. This is not going to be happy for Wild Turtle. Down to half HP. Box comes across as well. Goodbye to one. And now it's going to be the second one. Nice dodging of Turtle by Yellow Pete. And the jump in, Flash Force. Yellow Pete low, low, low on health. One more Knight taking a special. Gets one back in a lot of resources spent by EG. It was a good teleport, though. Again, they went to the lane that was ahead for their team, uh, EG trying to capitalize on the bottom. They barely lost Yellow Pete, but still, it was a good first step in getting right back in this. And you can see the gold 1,700 apart right now as Dyrus actually runs to the bottom end to hold things up for himself, but the rest of his team is still showing up there. So, TSM, clearly the ones doing a bit better on individual plays. EG is still doing some nice play calling overall. But you said these teams are running in with very different compositions. EG looking for a siege, looking to start uh, a bit more of a poke, sustain type of game, whereas TSM, just a lot more individual playmaking in a giant team fights. And we are getting towards the point, you know, um, only a minute and 45 seconds here left on another dragon. TSM are definitely not going to want to let that one go. Uh, I think EG got sort of a break there being able to grab the first one. And if they do step out a little bit, then it's going to be very hard for them to avoid getting caught by this TSM team. There's so many tools on TSM uh, for following up any sort of pick. Yeah, Pole lands onto a special, dropping him to half, though he's still got a minute and a half till that happens. The one thing to point out is Inox's teleport is on cooldown right now. So he actually has to make the rotation just like Dyrus does to get across the map here. Now EG, they get a turret for themselves. Nice play hit down here at the bottom lane, bringing the gold lead closer again. The other interesting thing I see is that Inox is going for the Ravenous Hydra build on Lee Sin. It's actually my favorite build for him, but it's a whole bunch of damage that Inox will be having later in this game. It also means that they're going to have a tremendous amount of wave clear. Ziggs in the late game is amazing at defending when, they, when you are behind, so that's a great thing for EG to have on their team right here. But also, Lee Sin's going to be able to clear side waves really quickly. Nice hook by Crepo. Gonna get jumped back uh -oh. in on though. The ulti is so much damage. Special picks the kill credit right there. Yellow Pete is stuck in 1v2. He's not gonna like this fight. Well played, TSM. Yeah, great hook, and you're rewarded with a death. <laughs> Tough break for him. Expecial is able to capitalize. His ultimate uh, locking him in place. And now the blue buff uh, contest here. I think Odd One is so strong that he can actually keep them there uh, by himself. Snoop is going to be forced to smite that one away, so they're at least able to keep it off of the Ziggs, mm -hmm. which will help a little bit with that insane wave clear, but it's still going to be very hard for them to push towers, and they'll probably opt to fight for the Dragon instead. 
Wow. All right, so there we go. It's TSM with control completely here, and EG forced to try to regroup. And well, we'll see what happens with this dragon. It's coming up right now. Inox stuck in the top lane. Dyrus already making his way down the map. Inox about 10 seconds behind him. Can EG buy enough time, or will they even go for this one? Dyrus still in the rotation against the push lane. TSM first look at the bottom lane, and Yellow Peak gets slowed. Gets a lantern, but Expecial's gonna land the E. Can he get more box slows? Expecial down the dive is on Crepley. Here comes Snoopy. Expecial drop low. His shield's going to end soon, and the damage is gonna come across. Nice knock up there. Special does fall. Now, can they find Wild Turtle? Now they find the odd one, though. He's been hooked up. Does not have an ulti anymore. That's surely to be a kill. And Wild Turtle forced to run. Can they get enough? Yellow Pete's ulti almost back up. Oh, oh the missed flash, but Snoopy gets it anyway. A three for nothing in trade for the turret. And now, Crepo coming in, trying to get away from Dyrus, who's joined the party as well. Does he get the damage he needs? Crepo's so very low. Yes, Dyrus picks up one. Now he will flash. Caitlyn ultimate. Snoopy Q. And. Oh, oh so short. Nothing. Dyrus gets a one for zero. It was still a really good turnaround there for EG. Uh, you know, able to uh, stop the aggression. And then the hook landing on the odd one right as Ragnarok falls off means they were able to get in another kill for themselves and gain dragon control. So they are actually able to grab the second dragon as well. I was completely wrong. They're, they're the <laughs> ones controlling Dragon Airy here. Bjergsen now. Ooh, gonna have to the dodge. Does he have the damage? Snoopy surely to pop right here. Now can Bjergsen get out? Oh, there you go. Jumps to his clone. Bjergsen making it look easy, but that was impressive. Some beautiful shadow play right there. Leaves the one uh, from the old. Oh, now Expecial engages as well. Just by himself, though, so going to have to run now. Yeah, I don't think he really wanted that one. I have to run now. He's very aggressive at landing those E's. And about half the time, he's like, I wish I didn't do that. And all right, he's fine. Special's going to survive. He's OK. He's got a Sight Stone. He's got Ninja Tabby. He's all right. I actually really like that play because it's sort of like playing poker against your, uh, against your opponent. You get them in the mindset that you have somebody behind you, even though it's sort of a bluff here. All right, so let's take another watch at the Bjergsen uh, shadow play here. He fuses. The ultimate now. He already put down that W earlier, and he's gonna leave this shadow here. There's a ward on it, which will see him teleport over there. But it's such a long distance that it doesn't even matter, and he's able to get out of it uh, scot free. What I really like about that was Bjergsen knew he was coming. He went back first before ulting, so that he knew his return clone from the ultimate was gonna be the one down there instead of up near the mid lane turret. So confusing oh. keeping track of all of those clones. It was really <laughs> awesome. He went back to leave his ult clone in the same spot, and that's what he jumped back to. Really, really impressive. Uh, I really do like the new sort of ability to make plays with the new Zed ulti, just because the shadows are so much farther apart this time. Well, Twitter popped his ult mid, though, uh, for not much. Uh, his minions won the sprint against the enemy minions, but then they died to Zig, so that's the reward for winning the race. Nothing. They, got, they gave gold to Pobo out there, so nothing there for TSM, except just holding on to a 3,000 gold lead, despite losing all their dragons. It's all those turrets going down pretty pretty quickly here for TSM. And the Odd Ones farm uh, really doing a lot for him as well. He's, he's becoming a menace on that Olaf. We'll have to see how... Oh, never mind. Bjergsen going in. Gets, gets shot in the face. Yeah. <laughs> 1v2, he's like, never mind. But now can we get the jump in from Crepo? Oh, oh that hook. hook. Are you serious, Crepo? Can Yellow Peak go down? Nah, he'll survive this one. Well played, Crepo. Beautiful hook. See, this is kind of what happens with this sort of team composition when there is not an objective up on the map, like Dragon for them to take. You know, they're looking for just sort of random picks and random plays in the middle areas of the map because they don't siege up that well since Sivir is mm -hmm. such a short range. And without the perfect vision control and keeping track of the entire team of EG, they do end up backfiring. So the two Dragons that EG got, you know, just playing... Uh, on the opportunities that were presented to them yeah. were so huge. Yeah, and then a so they've done a great job here. Their uh, real like team comp goal hasn't come to fruition yet, but they've been making a lot, a lot of great mid-game plays here. I gotta give props to Snoopy, two, one, and four as well, being a big part of these ones. And Crepo, highest kills on the team with three. I love the, the kill stealing support. Good job, Crepo, making your mark here in NA. He's landed some beautiful hooks, so I'd say deserves them. Yeah. All right, well, the team's regrouped to the top lane here, and no one from TSM is around to defend this. Crapo going to tank some shots, and then here we go. And maybe an answered turret here for EG if they stay. They did make the rotation first and able to clear out one wave, but since TSM had the vision of them, um, they're able to answer. And all, all it really takes is Dyrus, even though they made the call for the entire team. You can see there every single member of TSM was rotating up top mm -hmm. to try and counter that in case the entire team of uh, EG wanted to fight. 
Um, but yeah, Dyrus was able to clean that one off, and they turned their sights towards the blue buff. Oh, and the blue buff got timed by TSM, and they are there first this time around. EG, unless he gets lucky. Nope, Bjergsen picked up the blue buff. Well played here, TSM. Getting some more control, sweeping out the wards as well. And it looks like TSM is starting to turn it on pretty hard right here. Inox not in a good spot. Dyrus 1v2, kicked backwards, but still on the chase. Going to fight Snoopy up a little bit. Should be a good fight for Dyrus, actually, still. And he's still going in. And then recalls in their face. Ooh, and yeah. Kills more minions. Not only does it only take Dyrus to hold that top lane, but he also is looking for the kill there. Chases off two members. The thing about Inox's build, though, he can lifesteal extremely quickly. And he doesn't actually base after that, even though he was taken down to almost 200 HP. With a Hydra, he just lifesteal right back up. Off oh, those it's crazy. Columns. Yeah, he's actually uh, maxed uh, Safeguard Iron Will first. So he's got 25 life steal, 25% bonus life steal on top of the 12 from Hydra. So when he does do the whole combo, yeah, like 700 health from a minion wave. And it's area of effect there. Yeah. So like I talked about, he can clear a minion wave really fast, and that's exactly what you want for your split pusher. Mm -hmm. Him having his teleport up now does open up the rest of the map um, for a play for them to make down bottom side, if they can get wards a little bit deeper. But says that bottom turret went down so early, the wards here for EG are pretty much only covering their own jungle, trying to defend against invades. And let's see if these guys can get more coverage then as time moves on. Of course, they've had a sight stone for a while, but different builds here from the supports. Expecial's upgraded all the way to face the mountain. He's got a single target shield for a friend, scales off his maximum health, whereas Krepa went sight stone. Still no GP10 at all, actually, but gets the uh, lock of the Iron Solari. So AoE shields here, much less money, but if you're going to steal kills, I guess you got it anyway. Yeah, you know, I guess you can sort of count a Sidestone um, as gold uh, generation, just because you, you save a lot of gold from not having to buy so many awards. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he does he does not have a... He's not even working towards that Talisman, which is what I would kind of expect for this team here, since this team would definitely benefit from a speed boost to get away uh, from the TSM. They're definitely not letting this Dragon get away, by the way. No. TSM fully waited for this one. Only Dyrus there in the top lane to hold that Inox split push. And I gotta say, for all the early difficulties that Inox has been having, he's pulling a good amount of attention, despite getting camped pretty hard by the odd one. So, he's an extremely mobile champion that wave clears really fast and has teleport. It's kind of a really good combination. Dyrus, though, he's having a lot of fun with this. He actually does not have a ward in that side push, but he's got one in the try. So he just saw Pabell to leave, at least. And unfortunately, it looks like Inox and Krepo not gonna be enough to threaten him here. So Dyrus gonna walk away pretty safely on this one. And we're in a bit of a lull again. Most of the action has been kind of around dragons. It's been early lane ganks, and then it was like, oh, we killed you all, let's take dragon. Or, hey, you're going to set up for a dragon, let's kill you before you get there. And wow, look at this chase, are... though. Down through the jungle here of EG, uh, Special is barely in range of Krepo to ult, but didn't get a good bead on him. Doesn't want to pull the trigger. I'm not going to pull for that one just yet. The whole team, actually, for both these teams, was pretty nearby. Could have been a full 5v5, but in this case, not so much. Looks like mid lane going to be where they congregate here. Bjergsen kind of leading the charge. These guys are kind of putting out poke, but not finding much. Yeah, so it's interesting, you know, on this patch that this sort of team comp where it's uh, really brawly and they don't have re very long range to siege up for TSM. Uh, it's a lot harder now to sort of gain complete vision control after you have a, such a strong team fighting presence because of the lack of, uh, of oracles. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to upgrade those lenses very quickly to be able to get them on cooldown and time to use for these invades. Plus, only one pink ward per member means that's really hard for them to finish. Odd one popping that Ragnarok. And the Ghost as well trying to run away, but soon, oh, the flay just not quite timed well. The box going to come across, though. Odd one knocked up there. So much damage coming across. Can he survive? No, he will not. Snoopy picks up another kill there. Three, one, and four. And EG again with control. See, great job. EG, even though they are behind, uh, they've been able to keep their own vision. Yes, TSM is invading our jungle and putting down vision uh, wards of their own, but as long as we're able to keep ours up, we can see uh, when they're out of position and they catch one of the champions that can go immune to CC and they still get him, even with that slightly missed time hook. And they kept up with him for a very, very long time. So there we go, odd one back up in five seconds and looks like we're right back where we were a couple seconds ago. Uh, EG grabbing their own jungle in the face of some wards, but that's fine. And TSM grouping back up towards this mid lane. 
Odd one gonna come back in. The fight's actually gonna start in a 4v5. Yellow Pete gonna oh. take a whole bunch of pain. Can this go down? Bjergsen gonna get the damage across. Yes, Yellow Pete will fall and Bjergsen goes back to the team. The jump on in, another kill picked up by Dyrus and Odd one gonna join the fight in about 10 seconds. Two for zero so far. The chasing on special who shielded himself with face in the mountain, helped himself survive. So good active there and we're good. That's why we were looking for the Sivir pick in Champion Select here. Uh -huh. They're able to boost them up and grab that team fight, just force it inside the jungle, catching d uh, the duo lane here for EG and taking them out. Bjergsen, by the way, did a great job. Whenever you're on Zed, you can have the confidence to chase that deep because yeah. half of what you're doing while you're chasing is leaving down shadows for you to escape already. Yeah. Yeah, and you get five seconds, just <laughs> you don't have, like two screens and just shows right back up and says, guys, remember I did this last time? You didn't kill me because I went the other way. Uh, Anox kind of fighting Dyrus a little bit, and you talked about Dyrus on Shivana being able to invade the jungle and steal stuff away. Once again, double golem stolen away there, Dyrus making life pretty hard for Snoopy. And since Dyrus has gone for the Blade of the Rune King, Shivana build, uh, this is going to be a very tough game for Yellow Pete to continue to survive. As we've seen already, he's having uh, starting to have trouble now, but the Shivana boosted in speed by Sivir plus Blade of the Rune King active and Bjergsen's Blade of the Rune King. There's just so many different things to deal with. Life's pretty hard when you're Yellow Pete right now, and unfortunately for him, he's uh, he's not starting any defensive items just yet. He's still going for Last Whisper. Maybe we'll see QSS next to get rid of that death mark, but yeah, poor Caitlyn. I would just, I don't want to be Yellow Pete right yeah, now. Yeah, well, like, almost the only option here is for having Crepo position himself far away from Yellow Pete so that they can get one of those late lanterns after Dyrus ults in and commits to one position. They can, they can at least buy a few seconds by completely switching to the other side of the fight. Um, but yeah, besides that, it's going to be fairly hard for them to redirect any of the aggro. All right, so a minute and a half till Dragon comes back up. TSM back on split push duty. Dyrus now to the bottom lane here. At least for the foreseeable future, going to clear these minions up. Looking around, TSM actually just doing some pretty normal bookkeeping right now. Actually, what Wild Bill full over the wall, and this is not good. Good bye. All right. Wow. All right, that one deserves a, a little clip at least because yeah. the small pull that you get with the hook on the second activation there, it was able to get him right over the wall, and Krepo takes it all the way in, securing that kill. Just a beautiful, that is the definition of a pick. Yeah, that was wonderful. All right, so now EG they got the numbers advantage. They've sent the one-on-one -on -one of the bottom lane. So 4v3 here in mid. They put a little bit of damage under the strip, but the engage is going to come by anyway. TSM love their underhanded fights. The dive in good by Yellow Pete. And Bjergsen dropped dangerously low and jumps back. He's going to survive. Now Pobelter actually surviving as well. Thanks to the locket. No, Dyrus has something to say about that one, but the fight will continue. Bjergsen looking to come back into this battle as well. Snoopy forced to oh, run back. Oh, Anox! Can he find the kill? Have it, oh, the Ravenous Hydra active does not deal enough damage. And now Krepo is in a really bad spot. He's going to go down. TSM just keeps finding these fights that just barely work for them. Four versus three, they decided to engage that one because of a beautiful ult there from X Special. All right, let's take a look at this one. There goes the Solar Flare, trapping two members. And Odd One just jumps in right on them. Bjergsen, like we said, able to easily kill Yellow Pete. And then Odd One sticks on Pobelter as long as he can. Enough time for Dyrus to jump in there. He actually flashes over to finish that one off. This is actually a really good play there. Inox, as you know, lands the Q, but not quite able to finish off Bjergsen. And now TSM just now equalized the Dragon score as well. EG outmaneuvering and making so many great plays early on to get those Dragons. But ironically, the later dragons are just worth more, and TSM's picked up those. So that was a team fight without the Sivir even on TSM. And they were able to win it fa fairly well, plus get the objective after. Dyrus no longer has his flash, and he's going to have to just try and run away from this one. He's going to keep trying. The minion's going to go down, certainly, but looks like it's not enough damage going to come across here. Could be pretty heavily armor stacking Dyrus. They take this opportunity, though to gain an advantage on the other side of the map. Because of the pink ward inside Baron, they know there's no vision of the actual HP, and this is going to be a tough steal for Snoopy. Well, they're going to put the ward down, so EG knows about this, but especially trying to lock up Snoopy in the background. He's going to be okay Oh, Pobelto's so got his ulti too, though. Zix could combo damage here. There's a lot of bursts available. How can this these guys... This is so dangerous! 
Uh oh, uh oh, Bjergsen pulled in as well. The dive's gonna come on in. Nope, no damage on Bjergsen. That's gonna be a kill on the Krepo. And Sivir picks up Baron. One smite coming across for the odd one. Subi's gonna go down as well. Big fight for TSM. But Belter forced to Zonius, but Dyrus likely to pick up that kill. No, it's gonna be Wild Turtle with the credit here. Uh, if you count Baron, triple kill for him. And this is a very good fight for TSM. Like I said, extremely close right there. A jungler does not even grab the Baron. It goes down to Wild Turtle. Mm -hmm. The most the, skilled members of any team. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> the ultimate did go off from Babelta too. So that was a very uh, very chancy play there from TSM, but definitely paid off. They were able to get the objective. Plus now they've got a huge huge lead um, with the extra Baron buff running. They're gonna be able to grab that turret. Uh, wonderful stuff now by TSM. Over 10,000 gold in the lead now. 30 minutes in. Right now we hit 30 minutes into the game. TSM still 10,000 in. I made my prediction correctly. Good job, me. TSM, Bjergsen on the split push mid. Dyrus onto the bottom lane. He's going to be pulling attention soon, and it's just over and over. Dyrus pulling the members over, going back into the fight, and turning battles around. We've seen this time and again from Dyrus. Looks like they are going to um, pull a split push here. Um, just shove in two lanes. Like I said, their team's not that great at sieging up, but they will not hesitate to pull a trigger on a dive here. Um, Dyrus, you talked about being super tanky. He could be oh the point man for a dive. Oh, oh no. Uh, this is, actually, Bjergsen might not get this one. He's going to jump back with his ultimate. This is only two members of TSM fighting. And he's going to get locked up there. The ace in the hole does get blocked, but Snoopy's still on the chase. Bjergsen flashes out and survives. Would you believe it? Dyrus on the run, slowing the enemy team with a Randuin's Omen and Wild Turtle getting the solo split push mid for a turret. TSM coming ahead on that one. That was crazy. That was Dyrus and Bjergsen against the world. And they come out ahead. Inox, not in a good spot, special, uh, not the best solar oh, player. Flash for the ignite. ignite. Shield Shield wait. Off. Can't help him. Special picks up the kill. Bloodthirsty Leona making that one happen. Now Dyrus on the run, but it's special. Uh oh. I don't know if there's a way out of this base. You did already burn your flash. Odwin cannot help you. He is not Thresh. Special, you are going to go down. Nice try, buddy. But he does get a trade <laughs> kill. Tyrus gets the turret. He just threw uh, the odd one, a uh, groggy ice right there. It said, Chug, you're going down. Rest in peace. R.I.P. in peace, it's special. It's okay, we'll see you again in 30 seconds when you respawn and join your team again. TSM, though, they just got a bunch of tier two turrets. They've got six to one on that score now. TSM looking very good this game. So those were some interesting dives by TSM. They did lose a couple Baron buffs uh, with this play. And also the Baron buffs on the members who actually haven't died are getting close to timing out. So they the little sort of power play that they had um, didn't quite go flawlessly, but they did get the turret down bottom as well as a couple kills. Okay, so here we go. New test for TSM. Can you break into the inhibitors right now? They've got a pretty standard 5v5 team fight. A lot of ways to engage, a lot of ways to dive in. They're going to recall, group up, buy some new items, and try again. Spirit Visage done here for the odd one. He's nice and tanky. Of course, a couple ninja tabbies for these guys as well. Uh, Infinity Edge now done for a wild turtle. So TSM really doing great on items. And Dyrus has 300 armor just in human form. So <laughs> going to get even more when he jumps into dragon form. Oh, man. I think he will be okay with tanking a turret if they decide to go for a dive. Just shove up one lane, grab five members. Uh, as long as Dyrus is the one with the first damage there tanking the turret shots, uh, they should be able to at least uh, run EG off of a turret. And we'll see if they can do that right here. Baron buff about to time out right now, but... They're ready to go for some of this fun 10,000 gold lead once again. Actually, actually 14,000 at this point. Dyrus sweeps away a ward. Bjergsen on the top lane split push. Looks like Dyrus towards the bottom. Where will the rest of the team go? Snoopy taking a bit of poke. Stuck inside his own base. All of EG actually stuck inside their own base. Using what wave crew they have to keep themselves alive. TSM still knocking at the door. I mean, yeah, like we talked about already, the Ziggs wave clear, it's so hard to siege up against that. And then Inox is the building the way that he has. It has just as much wave clear as a Ziggs almost. The only problem for him, he has to get a little bit closer. So it's kind of dangerous. And actually, Yellow Pete Yellow in the Pete top engaged. lane. Very jumped on. He's got a QSS, so he's fine. And now Bjergsen. Uh-oh, this is not good for you. Picked up for a kill. TSM I'm going to re-engage again. Four versus five. Stoopy's going to drop. Yellow Pete getting ricocheted on. One hit from dead. He's going to survive. Oh, nice knockback there. Krepo going to go down, though, TSM. Two for one on this fight completely. Yellow Pete picks up home guard. going to come back into this fight. TSM still looking to take down a turret, though. It's back, getting back door, though. So EG likely to push them out here. Good damage onto the odd one. Krepo just played 
the dragon out of the air to save his AD carry right there. What a beautiful play. Uh, at least saving the life of Yellow Pete. Yeah. You know, two members dying still, and TSM still with control of the map, but they did stop the aggression. Yeah, and it is, it's that, it's that bot lane synergy. So here we go. Yellow Pete jumped on. Good QSS. All right, so he's able to get out of this one, but since Snoopy uses, uh, you know, the assault battery to get out here and kill Bjergsen, he does extend himself a little bit, and the rest of TSM not going to let him get away from that one. Let's watch this again, because Darius goes in, and it is the play from Prepo. Has him right out of the air. That was absolutely gorgeous. You know, we talked about bottom and synergy. Crepo knew Yellow Pete was going to die, and so he used Flay Not the on my time. watch! No! Of course, he died too. So, uh, non-scumbag Crepo took it for the team, made Yellow Pete live. All right, so let's you know let's take a look at the trinkets because I think you know trinkets are a really good indicator of who's winning the game. It's actually tied up, you know, yep. both of them with uh, two sweepers each. Mm -hmm. um, In it's, fact, both supports upgraded them too. It's uh, yeah, so you get the oracles upgrade, but um, it's something that I don't see pretty much ever, and I've already talked about this once before. But I want to say it one more time. I feel like the orb trinkets are actually a really good comeback tool because if you just get one when you're on a team that's losing like this and you've lost your vision control of your own side, then you can use it so that you don't have to face check barons and stuff. It looks like we will have dive though. Special taking a bunch of damage, but it's a very tanky man right there. Snoopy dropped dangerously low. He will go down most likely. Pavels are already picking up a special though. Two for one trade so far. Look at this fight go on. Everything is going the odd one's way right now. Krepa going down as well, but Yellow Pete in the back lines firing away. Can he beat the odd one here? Can he get the damage? Yes, he can. Look at that fight. Bjergsen, the only guy alive from TSM. Uh oh! No! Low seven seconds till Baron, but EG don't have the personnel to take it. Okay, there's no Pobelter ulti. We can look away. What a good hook. This was just while I was jabbering away about trinkets. But anyway, Bjergsen gets taken down so low before this fight it, that EG actually have a really good chance here because TSM are also tower diving. Uh, really good pickup right there, though. Bjergsen does decide to go right back in and it blow up Inox. Um, odd one grabbing that double kill that you talked about. Was pretty huge. The uh, Pabelter Zanyas is going to keep him alive long enough, and Yellow Pete with some nice moves, keeping his distance from the odd one. A triple kill for Pabelter in that fight. He started the game 0-1-0. Uh, zero, zero. He's come up to 5-3-3 three, three since then. This kill score has remained incredibly close this game. TSM obviously getting more turrets, but at least one answered back. And EG also stealing away some jungle. Yeah, look at this Yellow Pete uh, red buff steal all by himself. No vision in the jungle. Just going to get that one as quickly as possible and probably try and jump out um, because Wild Turtle's on the hunt. Yeah, definitely. And so here we go. EG grouping back up. Baron buff is alive. Of course, TSM has been taking Ooh, all the dragons away. And they away. see Yellow Pete. He walks by the minions, so they're aware. No AD carry going to be available for EG. TSM in control of the Baron area. This could be another very dangerous one, though, because we know how much damage EG can put from over the wall. And look at the damage up there. Down below half, Yo comes across Snoopy, getting focused on by the entire team, and they've stopped Baron until he goes down. That is Vi, Dad, and the team should be coming back. They're special, tanking up for the team. Not a big deal. Baron does go down. Autumn picks it up. Wild Turtle very low, but a kill and a Baron well secured by TSM. He will get the kill on Snoopy while the rest of the team finishes Baron. And Bjergsen teleports to get out again again once with the shadow. Meanwhile, Special will have to walk his way all the way around. All right, TSM. Special low, but whatever. You got a Baron buff on you. Five versus four. Baron buff on as well. Mid lane inhibitor turret is dead. Inhibitor itself standing, but of course the numbers advantage shouldn't be that hard to kill. TSM looking for the push. Yeah, all the ultimates are down for them, though. So they're, that's why they're being a little bit hesitant here and just slowly trying to work up towards this inhibitor. Uh, one extra man on the field doesn't mean that they'll get it, though. Now, will they back with this top lane, though? Looks like they're looking for it there. The 5v5 is back in action, though. Belts are healing back up, and here comes the damage. Will they look for it? Hook comes across, does land onto Bjergsen. Good target there. The engage is on. The fight started. Who's going to take all the damage? Look at the dive down to the bottom side of the map. Yellow Pete dangerously low. He's going to fall. Bunch of kills to start this one out. So far, 2-3 dead for EG. This is not good. Pobelter surrounded by TSM. He's going to go down. Only Krepa left alive. This could be the game ending in explosive fashion. TSM taking a top lane inhibitor. And now the mid lane should have minions flowing in soon. This could be the game. Yeah, this is probably going to be the game here. Very exciting plays here from the Brawly team of TSM. 
boost it up once again with On The Hunt. 39 minutes in, both inhibitor, or sorry, Nexus Turret's going down at the same time. The minions all falling over, huge support there from Expecial, a bunch of items on him, and then Nexus gonna be going down 39-14 in, TSM making it one on one. No, like, real big reactions from him, though, because, you know, they were ahead for so long, wasn't really, you know, yeah, this guy was set. Yeah, there we Not go. Not that big a surprise there. Whoop. The high five of the cameraman. You always got to look for it. About a signature of Snoopy's stare. Hope we can get that one back, by the way. It's been a while. It's been a, it's been a while. We haven't actually had it in uh, the North American LCS yet. No. Last time I was in North America was the uh, Season 2 World Finals. He was on the... Uh, the analyst task, and we, we got that one to start things out. It was good, but I missed that. I missed it. It was a good touch. All, All right, right, though. Uh, both these guys, you know, there's a lot of respect between both teams here. Absolutely. A lot of great players on both sides, of course. Those trainers are competitive. Uh, League of Legends in general. TSM, though, so good at rallying up the crowd. And there's a bunch of fans here. You saw the vote. 74% thought they would win. They were right about this one. TSM put on a really good performance. Yeah, it was a very well executed brawler team. I yeah. mean, not much more we can say about it. It was it was exciting to watch. Yes, it was. And you have to give uh, props not only to the members that were diving, but also uh, Expecial, landing yeah. a lot of those engages with Leona, key part of that comp. Made a lot of that happen. I gotta give props though to EG because they mm -hmm. they made it look close. They had a couple of really good play calling uh, moves early on. The two dragons they got at the beginning was great. I, they kept the game close in kills as well. When you're down in, in gold that hard and still picking up champion kills, that's hard to do, and that went really well also. There was a couple times, you know, where they were able to turn around even even fights with, uh, with even numbers there. That really definitely surprised me. I'm excited to see them in the future in the North American Alice. They got some sharp play calling, though, TSM. So good at kind of pushing advantages forward. We talked about that a little bit in the pregame, where once they get ahead, they tend to get you... Uh, pretty quickly. A lot of turret destruction by these guys. Really, um, a lot of demolition there. And that was where most of their gold came from, actually. Yeah, I mean, the odd one getting ahead early there. Mm -hmm. uh, Dyrus, like we said, with Shivana, was able to shove up in the top lane. And since they got that kill, then they sort of extended their sphere of control into Snoopy's jungle. Yeah. It caused a, ro a lot of problems from that uh, uh, upper side of the map. Yeah, Dyrus stayed big and relevant the entire time. I actually got to give a lot of credit to him as well. So, Guys, congrats to TSM, and coming up, Riv and Jat sit down with TSM's Bjergsen, and then we'll jump into our final game of the day when CLG clashes with Dignitas. So touch that mouse, we're, st we're still going to have more action coming to you after a break. I'm on to Kate. Never mind. I'm getting Kate. I'm on Snoopy. I'm on Crepple. Crepple, Crepple, Crepple. Crepple, 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 Crepple. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Six is gonna have ult soon. Six is gonna have ult soon. Can we just kill that guy or no? Can we just kill him? I need to ward here. I need to ward here. No, don't ult him. Don't ult him. We have to get off. I can kill Crepple. Do you want me to kill Crepple? We don't take damage. We don't take damage. Just have all on tank. When do you have smite? When do you have smite? He doesn't smite? have smite I for this. I have smite now. I have smite now. Oh, he's smite. He's smite. smite. smite in but he's right there. I can just stun him. I can stun him. Are you, tell me when you're bursting. Thrash, thrash, thrash. I'm, I'm stunning. I'm stunning. I'm stunning. He ulted. He ulted over. Oh my god. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, I got it. Okay. Pole belter. He has Zonius. He has Zonius. I'm going. I'm pushing mid. They have ult. They have all. Yeah. 